Hello, and welcome to another episode of Low End Box TV. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to work with storage volumes at ByVM. ByVM is a, store, a VPS storage provider. They've been around a long time and are a community favorite. And one of the features they offer is storage volumes. These are Think of them as kind of independent disks that you can move around from VPS to VPS. Now, traditionally, when you got a VPS server, it had, uh, let's say it came with, you know, 40 gigs of disk. Uh, that 40 gigs was locked to that server. If you needed more disk, you either had to upgrade to a higher package or make some kind of special arrangement with the host. What uh, ByVM has done is create storage volumes that you can buy uh, in various sizes and attach to your uh, VPS and if you want you can move them between VPSs etc. This is similar to the block storage that you would see from uh, DigitalOcean, Vulture, Linode, and certainly the big cloud such as AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. So in this uh, case, I've got a VPS out there running. I've called it storage.lowend.party, and I've uh, also got a uh, four terabyte volume that I'm going to mount. And what I wanna walk through is the process of mounting it on the server, and then on the server, what you need to do uh, so you can get it ready for, for use. So I'm logged into Stallion. Stallion is by VM's uh, control panel. And I'm gonna go here under the storage volumes, and here's the uh, volumes that I've got. Now storage volumes are sometimes called slabs at ByVM uh, and they call their VPS slices so you can use whichever term you'd like. Uh, it does say here a maximum of eight volumes can be attached to a single virtual server so it gives you a lot of flexibility. Now I've got one here it says it's four terabytes it's called data very cleverly and I'm just going to click on attach it to a virtual server and I want to attach it to storage.lowend.party and just click attach volume. And that's it. It should be attached. And now we're going to switch to the VPS and configure it there. All right. So I am logged into my VPS here. This is a Debian 10 system. I just installed it from the template for purposes of this tutorial. I haven't upgraded, updated, or anything with it yet. Now let's take a look at DMSG. This is the kernel's message buffer. And You'll see some messages here toward the end about a device called SDA. In fact, the last message here is attached SCSI disk. And a couple messages up from that, you'll see that it is a four terabyte device. And that's uh, one way of determining um, what the name of the device is, the device name of the block volume that was installed or the slab to use the ByVM terminology. Another uh, way is to do the lsblk command and it's not quite as obvious here, but well, actually, I guess it is, because you can see here this one is called four terabytes. Other systems, are, other devices listed here, I should say, should be pretty obvious what their role is. So SR0 would be a uh, read-only media or a CD-ROM, something of that nature. Uh, VDA is the actual system. So it's 20 gig disk. Under that, I've got two partitions. One is the root partition at 19 gigs, and one is a one gig partition. Um, so obviously this is the one that we're interested in. Now, again, it is a disk, sort of like you just bought it from the store, took it home. It has not been uh, partitioned or anything like that. So that's the first thing we need to do is to partition it. And to do that, I'm gonna need to install the, uh, whoops, forget my commands here, app get install the part D command, or the part D package. If you're familiar with uh, FDisk, that's a kind of an older system. Uh, Part D is the current way really to uh, partition disks. And we're gonna use that because we wanna make a, a GPT partition table on this system. Um, and if that doesn't mean anything to you, uh, just for larger systems and really all systems, I think going forward, that's the, that's the way to go. So uh, we're gonna do a Part D dev SDA and that SDA, as you may recall, is the, the disk that we found here, and we also found it in uh, DMSG. So part D S dev SDA, make a label of the type GPT. Boom. And now we actually have to make a partition on it, so we'll go part D dash S dev SDA, uh, unit mibibytes, make, we have to put something there, so make part primary, uh, primary, 
and go from 0% to 100%. Now, obviously, I could partition this disk however I want. I could have 12 different partitions of different sizes. However, I want to carve up that four terabyte. But for my purposes, it's usually best just to have it as one big disk. So let's go ahead and do that. And now I can do a part D dev SDA and I can print once I'm inside the part D interface and I'll see there, there's that, um, that partition. All right, so let's quit out of that. Um, now I'm going to need to make this ext4 dev sda1 and that's going to create an ext4 file system. Obviously, if you want to use a different type of uh, file system, you'd have a different make this command. Make this being short for make file system. But I'm just going to use ext4. So make this ext4 dev sda1. Always good to double check these commands because we're, we're getting right in there at the device level. You don't want to accidentally. There are some safeguards that usually won't let you make this a mounted uh, partition, but always good to just double check, make sure that uh, you're typing what you what you think you're typing. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, that's because I'm reusing this from when I tested all of this out <laughs> when I was first doing this tutorial. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. You probably will not see that uh, message, but here are the standard messages saying, hey, we're creating it, etc. Now, before we continue, I'd like to highlight one of our community advertisers. OnApp has been providing hosting software for many years and recently released Cloud.net, a cloud-as-a-service platform for providers who want to sell VPS or VMs. Whether you're bringing your own servers to the table or you're looking to rent servers from their marketplace, Cloud.net lets you manage everything with one hypervisor and one pane of glass, including integrations with many popular software packages. Over the past year, we've interviewed both their CEO and their head of marketing on Low End Box and learned a lot about this very interesting product. Check out the interviews and the links in this video's description. And if you're interested in looking at the next generation cloud as a service platform, visit cloud.net. Uh, I also have to make a mount point for it. I'm just going to mount it on a directory called slash data. And what I could do right now is say mount dev SDA1 on data. And let's do a DF. And sure enough, there's my massive four terabyte disk. Now I'm going to unmount it because what I want to do is put it into Etsy. Uh, whoops. I want to unmount. I want to put it into Etsy FS tab. And FS tab is the table, FS tab meaning file system table, that um, the at, at boot time is uh, examined to determine what file systems to boot. So I want data to be mounted, you know, slash data, which is my block storage or my slab. I want that to be mounted at boot time every time the system boots. So I'm going to put this into FS tab so it's automatically mounted. I don't have to go in and every time and type that mount command. So um, the first thing I'm going to do actually is grab the block ID of slash uh, dev SDA1. Now I could actually also go back up here to my um, make this command because it's mentioned here but let's just do a block ID dev SDA1 and grab that and yep that's the same one that we had up here but let's go ahead and grab that at UUID and then I'm going to edit the Etsy FS tab file all right so we're going to say UUID equals and here I could, if I preferred, I could actually just put dev SDA1, but I think the UUIDs are preferred these days. Um, so that the first um, parameter here, and this is, uh, these are different parameters that we're going across. Uh, it's, a, it's a table, so think of these as columns in a row. I'm gonna wanna mount that on data. My device, it's gonna be an ext4. Um, for options, the only option I'm gonna say is mount it read write. And then the last two are a little bit more esoteric. Um, should dump, ignore it, or include it? I don't really care. I'm going to say ignore it because I don't use dump. And then what pass to use in the FSCK? I'm just going to go ahead and put that in pass one. All right. So now what I should be able to do is just say mount data. And sure enough, there it is, mounted. And if I just go over to data, I will see it looks just like a normal directory, albeit uh, one with an awful lot of space on it, ready for my use. So that's how to use 
slabs at 5EM. Uh, again, very similar to block storage you would get at, uh, you know, Vulture, DigitalOcean, Linode, or one of the big cloud providers. But kind of cool to see this type of technology coming down to the, the low end uh, provider level. So uh, if you're looking for um, some flexibility and uh, quite a bit of storage and something to keep in mind. If you enjoyed this video, I would invite you to visit us at Low End Box or LowEndTalk.com uh, where we have excellent technical content, the best deals in the hosting industry posted almost daily. We've got uh, spirited discussion and a lot of thoughts and opinions from industry leaders. Until next time, happy hosting. Thank you.